everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. I'm your host, Cassidy Lynn, and I'm here to wish you a happy new year. Welcome to 2024. If you're listening to this on New Year's Day, welcome to the new year. Um, okay, so I have to I have to apologize to you guys because I made an episode and I really hyped up the last episode of the year and then I didn't post an episode. <laughs> I really just didn't batch my holiday episodes, which I should have, but I wanted them to kind of be like in real time in the moment. So I, my last episode of 2023 was probably not as eventful as you guys thought it would be, but that's okay. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm sorry. I didn't post an episode last week. I literally have not in the duration of my podcast, however long it's been around, I have not missed a week. I've like literally never done that, but I just figured I didn't listen to any podcasts on the week of Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, like you just, you're just not really in the mood to listen to a podcast. So I just figured I'd save myself and save you guys from having to feel like you had to listen to another episode. So here we are in 2024. Welcome to the new year. We've got a lot to cover today. We in this episode are really going to focus on getting in the right mindset for 2024. We're going to talk about goal setting. We're going to talk about what's in, what's out. We're going to talk about like, what are some of the good things that happened in 2023? And I also asked you guys what your goals were for 2024. What were some of the biggest lessons you learned in 2023? So we're going to go through literally all of that. It's crazy. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a Christmas update, a little bit of a life update since I've talked to you guys last. Um, I had Christmas, obviously, for everyone that celebrates. Happy Christmas. If you don't, happy holidays. I hope you had a great break. Um, So I had Christmas and it was great. It was so fun. I personally love Christmas time. I love to give people gifts. Like I think like low-key that might be like my love language. I just really like gift giving. Obviously I like getting gifts too, but like I could care less about the gifts that I get. I just like to buy the people that I love gifts. So that's part of the reason I really love Christmas because I just really like the aspect of it. So I wanted to give you guys like a little bit of a haul. I'm not going to show you everything that I got, but I can just like tell you guys some highlights of some of my favorite things that I got. And then some of my favorite things that I gave too. So I feel like it's been a couple weeks now since I've had my A7R5, but that really was like my Christmas gift to myself was that and the 24 to 70 lens. Also for like taxes, I felt like it'd be good for me to like buy something (laughs) towards the end of the year. Um, So that was my Christmas gift to myself. My favorite gift that I gave was Charlie's gift. Obviously I got him tickets to go see the lions play, which if you're not like into sports, it's like his favorite football team. And I don't know, I'm not really, I'm not really into football, but he's never been to like a professional NFL game. So I got him, him and I tickets because you know, he's not going to go by himself. So I'm going as well. We're going, I think it's going to be next week. I don't know. I don't know exactly when it is, but Um, yeah, we're going to a game and I tried to get like decent tickets, you know, kind of towards the front. Honestly, guys, they were expensive. Like I didn't realize NFL tickets were so expensive. I thought they were going to be like a hundred dollars maybe, but no, they were not a hundred dollars. So I got us like, okay tickets. Like I didn't want to break the bank. Literally the front row tickets are like thousands of dollars. I was like, this is crazy. Am I seeing Justin Bieber? Like, no, like what? Like, why is it so expensive? Um, so yeah, got him tickets. Um, he was really excited when he opened them. Um, so that was fun. Also another gift that was probably my favorite gift was I got my sister Lindsay, a custom like graphic tee of our childhood dog. He's still alive, but he's just like such an icon and it's, his name's Rico, our dog. And he's just so cute. And he's Lindsay's favorite dog ever. So I got her like this graphic tee and it has like five photos of Rico on it. And it says Rico across the top. It's really cute. It's like one of those, like, it looks like a graphic tee. It's like a custom graphic tee, obviously. Um, so that was one of my favorites to watch her open it. She was so excited. She like wore it to bed that night. It's just so cute. I love when I give a gift and someone like loves it so much that they like 
immediately start wearing it or using it. That's how I know it's like a good gift, you know? <laughs> um, okay. So then I wanted to just tell you guys a few of the things I got. I don't know if this is interesting to anyone. If it's not, you can skip through it. Um, but Charlie got me Birkenstock clogs. They're like white corduroy. So they're kind of like stripey looking. Um, they're really cute. I didn't even realize I wanted them, but then when I opened them, I was like, I actually really could use these, especially in the summer. I feel like my shoe game is just lacking in the summer. So got some Birkenstock clogs from Charlie. Um, I got, this was kind of the year for me of like practical things. Like I just told people I needed like a bunch of practical stuff. So I got a new straightener. I had been using the same straightener since mm, I was 16 probably or 15 and I'm 25. Okay. <laughs> so it's been like almost 10 years that I've had the straightener. So I finally got a new one. Praise God she my straightener literally wasn't even straightening anymore like it just was so bad so that was nice got like a toothbrush that's very nice um I the main thing that I wanted um was like new snowboard gear so that was like the big thing that I put on my list so I got a bunch of new snowboard gear I got like this matching like it's not matching it's this like one piece snowsuit thing and it's like all pink I'll have to take some pictures and like post them of this pink snowsuit um it's really cute and I wanted to just like I wanted to slay on the slopes you guys know what I mean <laughs> so I got like a one piece pink snowsuit I got snowboard boots I got a helmet um I already had goggles and that was basically, I already have the snowboard, but I needed like, you know, other stuff. My other stuff I had was just like hand-me-downs that I bought like secondhand. So that was like my big thing for this year. Another iconic thing that I got was actually from Sony. Sony, if you're listening, thank you for this gift. I got a PR package from Sony and they sent me, it was like, okay, I think it was like matcha tea leaves. It wasn't like the actual matcha powder, but it's like these leaves and then a strainer that comes with it. And then this was the amazing thing. You know, you guys know like those mugs that like heat themselves up and keep the drink warm. They got me one of those, but on the mug, it is a little Sony camera and it says Sony on it. <gasps> it is just so cute. So it's like a self-warming mug, but it has a Sony camera on it. Ugh, guys, it's adorable. It's amazing. And you know, I love Sony. So it's just, ugh. It just made my, it made my Christmas. I'll tell you what. Okay. So those are all the gifts. That's everything. I will say I, I, okay. When I make my Christmas lift list, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I, I bas basically envision myself with these items. Like in order for me to put it on my list, it has to be something I really, really want. So obviously like I didn't get everything on my list and now I'm like, okay, like I kind of want these other things that I put on my list. Like they're on my list for a reason and I didn't get all of them. So I like low key might do some extra shopping and like just get myself a few of the other things that were on my list. I don't know if you guys feel that way too, but there were some things I was like, man, like I kind of wanted that for like this month or whatever. Like for example, I really wanted like moon boots. They're like these big, like, like literally they're moon boots. Like they're these big snow boots. And I thought they'd be so cute for like winter. Um, so I might, I might just get those for myself. <laughs> um, you know, Santa, Santa needs to do some shopping still guys. Okay. So we're going to move on. I know you guys love hearing all about my gifts. We're going to move on to, um, I wanted to kind of do a year recap. So just my best of 2023. What happened for me during this year? I hope you guys listening, I want you to do a best of 2023 for you and just like pile up some stats, go through like how many weddings did you shoot? How many sessions did you have? How much money did you make? Um, how many of your goals did you achieve? All of that. Um, it, it was really fun for me to go through and like look through all of my achievements for the year. Um, so I'm going to list off just my best of 2023. So in 2023, I had five merch drops, which is absolutely crazy. Um, not all of them were a full drop. I think two of them were just like, I released just one item, but five merch drops, one course launch. So I launched my wedding photographer course this year. Um, I had one preset launch in May. Those were my creamy dreamy presets. Oh no, March. Sorry, not May. My creamy dreamy presets I launched this year. If you guys don't already know, those are like my favorite presets that I have. I always like kind of bounce back and forth, 
but I really, really love these presets. I use them all the time. Um, I launched my AI brushes. So that was like a new product for me. And honestly, I've talked about this before, but my AI brushes were not something I really planned. I was just like messing around with them and ended up launching them and they ended up being my biggest launch of the year, which was crazy for me. So I did that. Um, I had a lot of travel and I kind of wrote out all of my travel for this year. I started compiling just all of my travels for this year, just like looking at my Instagram and it was crazy, you guys. So I started my year in February in LA and I also went to Santa Barbara on that same trip. Um, There's a wedding that I had to shoot in Santa Barbara. Um, and then me and Charlie went on our road trip in March and we took our camper and went to a million different places. We went to Zion, San Diego and Palm Springs. Um, and I think we stopped in Phoenix as well. So we did that road trip in March. And then in May, we went to Mexico. <laughs> we went to upstate New York multiple times in May. Um, we went to San Francisco. We went to Big Sur. New York again. <laughs> and then in June, we were in New York City and we went to Long Island. Um, and I don't think I had really any travel. Did I go somewhere in July? I don't know. I feel like this summer I didn't really go to a ton of places. And then in October, we did Italy and Mexico. And then in November, we went to Seattle. So lots of travel this year. I do believe I shot around 15 weddings this year. I actually didn't count them up. I should have. I definitely should have. I think I'm a, I was around 15 or 20 weddings, which is so funny because every year I say I want to shoot X amount of weddings and I, I always go over. Um, <laughs> so that was crazy. Um, other things that happened for me in 2023, I grew, I think at least 50,000 followers on Instagram it could be more, could be less. Um, I think I hit a hundred K in 2022. Um, and I'm literally right on the cusp of 200 K. So it could have been more than that, but gained followers on Instagram. It's always the goal just to grow. I don't really care how much I grow as long as I'm growing a little bit. Um, I grew my YouTube, which was a big goal for me. I, have, I think 18,000 subscribers now. And when I started YouTube this year, I think I had around 3000. Um, so that's really awesome. I also grew my Pinterest and my TikTok following. My TikTok was really challenging for me for a while. It was very stagnant. I was kind of stuck around like 150 K for a really long time. Um, and I just recently, I feel like in the past couple months, I had some videos start to get a lot of traction and I started to really put more effort into TikTok and being intentional about my style of videos. Um, and so my TikTok is at like 215K now. Um, so that was definitely one of my goals was just to grow it more because my following started on TikTok. I don't know if you guys know that, but I started growing big on TikTok first and then it translated over to Instagram afterwards. And now I feel like my Instagram and TikTok are pretty much equal for followers. So it was cool to see my TikTok grow based on um, the effort I've been putting in these past couple months. So that was another big thing for 2023. I hit 1 million downloads this year for my podcast, um, which is crazy. I, guys, you did that. Like it wasn't me. Like literally you guys did that. So thanks for downloading episodes. Um, 1 million downloads, crazy. Right now I'm at 1.7 million downloads. Um, so it's crazy how fast it's been like exponentially growing. Um, so I'm so glad you guys like my podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also doubled my income from last year, which is absolutely insane, but I'm really proud of myself for this because a lot of it is just a result of me trying new things, launching AI brushes, um, launching a course. Like it's just a result of merch drops and just, I don't know, doing things that help me continue to have passive income and kind of compile what I've got going on so far. Um, and you know, I booked like my highest wedding package ever this year. So all of that contributed to me doubling my income. Um, I started another podcast with my sisters go off sis. Um, that was just like a fun little adventure we just started, but big thing for 2023. Um, 2023 also had more brand deals than ever. And I'm super excited because 2024 is already shaping up to be the same, like just more brand deals than I've ever done. 
And this is just a really fun part of my job that I really love. So that was really big. Um, I, okay. For 2023 personally, I also bought a house. Um, so the house we currently live in, we moved. So that was really big. Um, there is something else I wanted to say, but I cannot remember it. Okay. Maybe it'll come back to me, but, um, yeah, big things happened in 2023. Super awesome year. Um, I feel like 2024 for me, it's feeling like a little bit of a shift in my business. Not like, not like I'm not going to do photography, but I feel things shifting a little bit. And I mean, I already like booked less weddings than I did last year and I've kind of cut it off and said like no more weddings for 2024. So that's been kind of big for me. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is so that I can focus more on like working with brands and growing my digital products. Um, I don't know. It's really hard to do all of it. <laughs> like it's really hard to do, to do wedding photography, to do sessions, to do online education, to do YouTube videos. Like it's hard to do all of that. So um, in order for me to be able to balance it all, I either have to hire someone or just kind of cut back a little bit. So weddings, I feel like are going to take a little bit of a back burner for me. Not huge, but just like a little bit. So um, let's go into some of your lessons for um, 2023. So I'm actually going to pull it up on Instagram really quickly. You guys basically submitted on my Instagram story and you told me your biggest lessons were that you learned this year. We've got a lot of really wise people out here. <laughs> so I just want to go through and um, read some of them because um, you guys you learned a lot. Um, it's okay to screw up, try and make it up the best that you can. So I think that's really wise. That's definitely something that I feel like I learn every year that mess ups are okay. And actually someone commented on one of my reels and they said like, it's better to show up imperfectly than to not show up at all. And like, I think that applies for social media. I think it applies in your business. Like it's better to show up and be willing and just able to mess up and make mistakes rather than just not trying at all. Um, someone else said, it's never worth it to overbook myself, no matter how cool the opportunity might sound. And like, I want to retweet this so hard <laughs> because I, there's just like so many times where I feel like I need to take an opportunity I need to do this thing, no matter how busy my schedule is, like it's the best opportunity ever. This actually happened to me twice this year. I had two different brands that wanted to take me on like these brand trips that they were doing. But with my schedule, it would be like I was getting back within hours of a wedding I had to shoot. And then another one was like I, I was going to be traveling out of the country and then coming back and flying right into this um, like brand trip thing. And it was so hard for me to say no, because it was such a cool opportunity, but I was like, number one, if they really want me, like they'll ask me again next year. Number two, it's never worth it to like tire yourself out so much. Like I knew I was not going to have fun on these trips if I was jet lagged or if I was just like so tired and overbooked. So I cannot like say that enough. Like that is such a good lesson. Um, leave toxic people. You might feel bad at first, but it's worth it. Yeah. Literally. Um, I'd rather charge my worth than book a discounted wedding. I'm going to have to retweet that as well. Is retweet like old? <laughs> like when I was in, I think it was middle school, Twitter was really big and we'd always like retweet people. So that's why I'm saying like retweet. Um, so maybe maybe I shouldn't be saying retweet, but literally I'd rather charge my worth than book a discounted wedding. You, I would much rather shoot a wedding that someone paid me my full price. And I know that they want to pay the, tr the prices that I charge rather than someone that's like looking for a discount. Like I just feel so much better about those weddings. So yes, absolutely. 100%. That's a great lesson. Um, learning to say no to not my ideal clients. Yeah. That's huge. Making time for yourself. Literally. If you guys are listening to this and like, it's kind of that new year, you know, you kind of have like that new year itch where you're like, I want to do something 
like big this year. I want to like do something different. I want to like really just, I don't know, grow my business or whatever it is. You need to have time for yourself. It's so weird how these two things go hand in hand. You think that growing a successful business and having time for yourself cannot coexist, but they're actually the two things that equal success. For me, when I started you know, going on trips for fun and, you know, just kind of pursuing the things that I was passionate about. That's when I started to see growth and I started to see a lot of success was when I was just focusing on me making time for myself, doing the things that I loved. And that turned into, because I feel um, fulfilled in that way, because I feel like I got enough rest. I feel like I see my family enough. I feel so just nourished and filled that I can then go and just like one put, give myself 100% to my business. I am not me if I do not have time for me. Oh, okay. Did I just say that? That's really good. I don't, I cannot be me if I do not have time for me. Okay. So make time for yourself in 2024. I promise you it's going to help you grow and succeed. Even if you feel like it doesn't help you, I promise it does. Okay. Not everything or everyone is for you and that's okay. Yeah. This kind of goes to that idea of like, not everyone is your ideal client. And it's really hard to like let some clients go because you're like, sometimes all you see is like the dollar sign and that's really hard, but not everyone's for you. Amen. So true. Um, this person said, I stopped comparing myself to other photographers and it's been amazing. That's so good. And that's actually one of my goals for this year is to not just stop comparing myself to other photographers, but to stop trying to be like other photographers. Like there are some photographers where I'm just like, you are so artistic. I love your work. Like I wish I could be you, but it's like, I don't want to be them because they like their style is unique to them. It matches their personality. My style is unique to me. It matches my personality. Like it just, I don't want to be them because then there'd be two. Like the, the reason that they're so amazing is because there's no one else like them. Um, so that's something big that I learned this year too. Okay. Um, have your backup camera if, and when your camera dies at an event or session, that sounds like someone had a little bit of trauma <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. Okay. Someone said, don't overbook yourself and double header weekends are way too much to handle. Okay. So let's talk about double header weekends for a little bit. I have mixed emotions about this. Okay. I actually just was talking to Tylee, one of my friends about this because she had a weekend where, um, it was like someone wanted to book her full weekend package. Well, it was just like a Friday, Saturday package where she would do rehearsal dinner and then the wedding. And then she had someone reach out about that Sunday and she was like, okay, I have a few options. I can say no and kind of like stagger all my weddings throughout the year, or I can say yes and get like you know, all of my weddings done for the month of May and June. And then I don't have to book anything until July. Cause I got it all done in one weekend. She's like, you know, she charges like a good amount. So she's able to like only do basically like one wedding a month. And she was like, I could just bang it out in that one weekend. And then I'd be good for two months. Um, and I was thinking about it and I told her like, I think you should do the double header because yeah, you might be tired, but at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have all of May and all of June to chill. And that's going to be so worth it. Like you're going to love having all those weekends open, but at the same time, I don't feel like you're able to fully give yourself on that second day. So like the first wedding you shoot on that second wedding, the next day, you're going to be tired. And I feel like, I don't feel like you can fully be, at least for me, I don't feel like I can fully be present and as creative as maybe as I was on that first day, but also maybe you're the type of person that feels like, Oh, I have a wedding tomorrow. So I'm going to kind of chill today, you know, at, at this first wedding and I'm not going to give my all so that tomorrow I'm not super tired. I don't know. I think you kind of have to have a certain personality and like, if you're the type of person that gives all your all and like all of your energy and you just need like a day to recharge after a wedding then I would say double headers are not for you. But sometimes I do feel like double headers are really nice because I'm literally just make like a bunch of money and then I don't have to like work for like a weekend or two. So yeah, 
I've got mixed feelings about it, but um, this person says double headers are too much and that's a great lesson, truly. Okay, that was a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, okay, so, mm, okay, I have a few from like the same person here, but they said, I learned that nobody likes criticism and criticism only breeds content. Um, okay, I don't really know what contempt means. Like I do, but I don't. So I don't have a lot to say about that. Um, ooh, okay. So <laughs> don't compare your day one to someone else's day 100, day 1000, etc. Progress does not wait. Progress is better than perfection. That's so true. Like it's better to make progress and just like continue to try rather than seeing that someone's on their day 100 and you're on your day one and just give up. So making progress is better than being perfect in everything you do. So true. <laughs> With a bunch of clapping emojis, this person said, back up your hard drives. I learned the hard way. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is something I'm, I'm always implementing. Back up your hard drives, back them up. Do it scared. Launch full time this year and I learned to not let fear hold me back. Honestly, good for you. Yeah. Do it scared. I love that. I, that's like a saying I've heard a couple times and I do feel like everything I do, there's a little bit of fear in me. Like a little part of me is scared that I'm going to fail. Um, I think that's the big reason I'm always scared when I do something that it's going to fail. And I've had things fail before and not be super successful and I'm still alive. Like I survived and like, it's not gonna, you can let stuff like that ruin you and stop you from doing something or you can let it become a lesson to you and you can let it become, you know, something that continues to motivate you in the future. I literally love that. Okay. Ooh, someone said art over content. Love that. I really want to start focusing this year more on like the art side of things rather than just like pumping out content. It's really hard for me because I feel like my job has become being like a content creator. Like I feel like I do have to put out a lot of content, but I do want to focus more on the art side of things. Something that I really loved was I did like a get ready with me for what was it? It was like, just literally just get ready with me for like a day. And I set up like my camera and I did like a bunch of fun angles and like did like a really cute, like, um, lot over my video and did it to some like really cozy music and kind of felt a little bit like a short film. And I really felt like the art in that. And that's something that I really want to implement into my work. Like my everyday content is making it more art. So absolutely. Someone literally said, just start. Absolutely. Ooh, do not let your guard down and don't let people walk all over you. Ooh, T. Yeah. Don't let people walk all over you guys. Stand your ground with clients that think they can control you and your business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ooh, it's okay to slow down. Starting small is better than not starting at all. I love that. Yeah, it's okay to slow down. I think we're always in this like go, go, go mindset. But yeah, that's, it's amazing. Comparison is only a setback. Mm -hmm. Stop slacking off if you want to grow your business. True. I swear the difference between you and the next person is you're actually doing it. The next person isn't like there are so many things that I almost just like didn't launch or I almost just didn't do. Cause I was like, oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I don't want to, but seeing things succeed and seeing that if you do them, it's going to be worth it. That's been like such a huge lesson for me. Um, if you dream about something, just do it. I love that. Oh, uh, these are so good. A lot of the same things. Like a lot of people are saying like, you're not everyone's dream photographer. That's okay. Um, don't compare yourself to others. Your skill set and personality sets you apart. So true. Ugh. These are really good, guys. People don't value free things. They will demand more if you give out favors. Ooh, interesting. I think that there's a time and place for like free freebies. Like I think it's good to get freebies so that you can like 
I don't know, get customers from it. You can get like, I don't know, like you can create community from freebies, but at the same time, freebies are not, you can't run a business on freebies. Like bakeries don't give out free cookies. Like, yeah, they give out samples, but they don't like, you don't just walk in, you get a free cookie and you leave. That's not how a business works. So yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. Um, okay. Last, we'll just do one last lesson. Um, don't let perfectionism stop you. And I think that's a really good lesson. Um, show up imperfect. It's better than not showing up at all. I really struggle with like feeling like I need to be perfect with every single thing that I do. Um, and I've learned that my most imperfect things actually succeed the most. So it's just, just goes to show people like when you're human. (laughs) Okay. So we're going to go to your goals for 2024. Um, you guys submitted a bunch of goals that you have. Um, Someone said to serve my clients better, to be way more consistent with each client experience by having my biz squared away and thriving on the back end. I absolutely love that. A lot of people saying going full time. And I say you guys can literally do it. You guys got this. Do it scared. Okay. That's what we learned. Do it scared. For real. Um, Book at least one destination wedding this year. You guys can do that. I believe in you. Destination weddings are really fun and I would love for you guys to all experience just that feeling of shooting your first destination wedding. It's so fun. Um, travel and go full time. Lots of, lots of those. Um, Ooh, lots of booking an international wedding. I will tell you guys, if you want to book internationally, it's great to start where you're from and try to find people that are like getting married internationally. Um, those are the best ways to get your first, um, your first international weddings. Um, a lot of you want to be published in like different magazines and stuff. That's amazing. You definitely can do that. Absolutely. Paid sponsorships. So this person wants to buy a new camera, the Canon R6. Um, love that. I think having gear goals is great. Um, I also want you guys to have goals of like, like a certain amount of weddings or a certain amount of income too. I think that's always really fun when you hit that goal. Um, Ooh, someone said book enough sessions to afford to switch to mirrorless. Love you for that. Love you for that. Um, I want to start marketing on TikTok and get leads from there. Um, there's a lot of you guys saying that you just want to like grow your business online and start, um, you know, that side of things. And I think that's a great goal to have for 2024. I think 2024 is the year of, um, like actual authenticity on social media, not this like fake authenticity where like you're kind of like curating things that are not real, but you make them seem real. I feel like it's really going to be the year of like, okay, this, like just being very real and transparent online and not in like a weird way, but like in a good way. Um, okay. Another goal, go out of my comfort zone in my photography and tap into more of my creativity. I love that goal. It's, it's very broad, but just going outside of your comfort zone and tapping into more creative things in your life. Um, you know, more creative things in your business. Maybe it's more personally. I think having creativity flowing in your life is like, so crucial as a photographer, as a creative, if you lose that creative feeling, you kind of lose everything. Like that's where it all started. And something that was really fun for me a couple weeks ago, I did some watercoloring with my mom. And then we did like another, we did it like two nights in a row. And that was so fun for me because I used to love watercolor in high school. And I just like kind of had this like spark of like creativity that I felt and almost like it almost showed me like even if I don't want to keep doing photography or like down the road, like I still am creative. There are other things I could do. Like I could watercolor. I could, I don't know, do pottery. Like I feel like there's so many creative um, avenues that I can integrate into my business right now. Um, And just tapping into your creativity, whether it's in photography or not, I think is so important. That's like, that's definitely a good goal to have for 2024. Um, Okay. A lot of you want to go full-time. 
and making full-time income. I think that's a great goal. And I'm telling you in 2024 in January, that starts like right now, you can do things right now to help you go full-time. And actually let's make that my next episode. I'm going to release. I am just decided that right now, but let's talk about what things you can do in 2024 to set you up to become successful and be able to go full-time. Okay. I got you guys. A lot of you guys want that. So we are going to talk about that next week. Um, shoot more weddings. Ooh, a lot of people have like house goals. Like you want to buy a house, you want to have a down payment saved. I think that's amazing. Like good job. Good job guys. Like you can do that 100%. And someone just said to start profiting from photography. And I think that's a very reasonable goal because you know, when you first get started in photography, it's like you have to do a bunch of free shoots for people. It's just kind of how it goes. So I would love for you guys to start profiting, you know, like make back the money you made from your first camera. I 100% think that you guys can all do that. Okay. So we're going to move on to goal setting. And this is going to be like kind of a part of the podcast where I want you to maybe listen to this when you can sit down and pull out like a notepad or um, if you listen to this in the car, like just let it inspire you and do this later. But um, for me at the beginning of the year, I actually try to do this a couple times a year, but I write out like my big goals for the year. Um, and I just dream big, to be honest, like even if I don't achieve what I want to achieve, I make it my, my dream list. Like I just make a dream list. Like, I don't know, even if I don't get it done, like I feel like even just putting it out there is better than not doing it. So I want you guys to write down your goals for 2024. Um, I want them to be specific and broad. I want them to be personal and business. Um, and I actually forgot to mention one of my goals for 2023 was to just get into Pilates. And that's actually something that I was able to do this year, which is super fun. And it's one of my goals for 2024 is to actually stick with it and, um, make that kind of like my workout thing. Um, so that's like, that would be a personal goal for me. Um, so we're going to goal set. We're going to dream. We're going to write down things that are unrealistic. We're going to write down things that are uncomfortable. Okay. But we're going to write them down because if it's something that you want to do, you best believe that we are doing things this year to make that happen. Okay. This is the year for dreams. Okay. So number one, for me, uh, one of my goals is to, um, book 2025 weddings that are all at the price point that I want to book at. And my goal is to maybe do like five to eight weddings is going to be my goal all at a higher price point. Um, for you, I don't know if your pricing is necessarily a goal, but you definitely should, if you haven't already <laughs> priced out 2025, create pricing guides and start, you know, trying to book 2025. Um, so that's one of my goals is just pricing myself and not like, I feel like I do compromise on my price sometimes if it's something I really want to shoot. Um, but I would love to have five day weddings at the price point that I like maybe my top package. <laughs> um, so that's one of my goals. I also want to do an event for my podcast. I think that would be so fun. It's probably going to be in Grand Rapids um, where I live. So if you listen to this podcast and you want to come to an event and I'll be there, that would be so fun. I don't know exactly like what it's going to be like or anything, but I would love to see this happen for 2024. I'm putting it out there. Okay, guys, it's going to happen. Um, I want to launch a new course and I'm I'm about halfway there. I started working on it this month or December. Um, and I'm almost there with like filming. I'm almost done. And then I just have to like put together like the actual course itself, <laughs> like edit all the videos and all that. So I really do want to launch a new course, um, maybe two, but who knows if I'll be able to launch two. That's a lot. Um, I want to travel to two new countries just for fun that's kind of been my new thing is like, I just want to go to these places I want to go to. If I can find 
people there, great to shoot. But if I can't, I still want to go to them. Um, and I do want you guys to know a lot of my travel, I book through miles. I have um, travel credit cards that I use for all my business purchases so that, you know, when I'm spending however much money I spend a year in my business, it's all on travel credit cards. Obviously, I pay them off right away. But like, that's helping me get plane tickets so that I can go to the places I want to go and create content or book sessions. Like that's kind of been my thing over the past couple of years is travel credit cards. It's really helped me be able to afford, you know, going to all of these amazing places that I go to. Um, okay. I want to launch merch that non photographers would like. This has been, this has been a challenge for me because it's really easy for me to just make stuff for photographers. Cause I'm a photographer and it's just comfortable for me. And I know my audience is photographers, but I would love to do some non photography related things for merch. Um, I really love clothing. So I think that would be such a fun thing to do. Um, I want to start a podcast Instagram. Yes, guys. Okay. I feel like I've been needing to do this for a while, but, um, I actually have the handle already for my podcast. I just need to literally post on it. Um, but I have the handle Oh shoot podcast. So I need to actually start like making that a thing. I haven't even, I haven't changed the profile picture. I literally just have the username. So if you guys want to go follow it, (laughs) you can go follow it, but I want to be consistent with my podcast, Instagram, and maybe even try posting like a couple of videos there every week or something. Um, that's a huge thing that I want to do. Uh, okay. Next one. I want to make at least, okay. This is going to sound weird. Okay. And I don't normally like talk about numbers like this, but I'm just going to say it. I want to make six figures from brand deals. Um, and I know that's kind of, that's like actually crazy, but I really think I can do it. Um, I, it's been one of my goals to like get big brand deals and I really feel like 2024, I can do this. Um, I've already like secured two pretty big brand deals for 2024. Definitely hasn't made me hit six figures yet, but, um, yeah. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm really nervous about that one, but I'm just putting it out there because I think it can happen. Um, I also want to invest my money, which is something that I started to do this year was like start my retirement fund and stuff like that. Um, and that's very daunting, but I did it. And this year I want to invest like my money and allow my money to just like make money for me, like my savings that I have. Um, I also on the same end of that, I would love to like start finding charities that I feel very passionate about and start donating to them as well. Um, I just money, money things are weird. Like I feel like money is so weird. I don't talk about it that much on my podcast, but I would love to get into more like charity giving and also like doing charity work as well like physically like just like helping in my community and stuff um that would be such a fun thing to do um I want to also try new brands of cameras I would love to get into like different film brands I would love to mess around with like different Canon and Nikon cameras and just like see what it's like um I don't know I feel like as someone who educates people I can't be the I can't just be talking about Sony. Like I want to have knowledge on like multiple types of brands, multiple types of cameras. I want to have used them before. Um, so that's a big thing that I want for 2024. I also want to launch a product that I've never launched before. Don't know what it is. Um, I want to do something that is super on brand for me, but, um, just something I've never done before. Don't know what it's going to (laughs) be. Um, but yeah, that's about as far as I've gotten with that one. Um, I think that's basically it for my goals for this year. For you guys, um, your goals can be literally anything. It can be however many weddings you want to shoot. Maybe you want to get into some avenue in your business you've never done before. I even was thinking about it last night. I was talking to my sister and I we were just talking about like different like business ideas and whatnot. And I was like, I kind like I would love to open some sort of storefront or like actual shop one day 
I just don't know what it would be. Um, Charlie really loves pottery. He's really good at pottery. Um, and I would love some sort of like pottery coffee shop type of vibe. That would be so cool. Um, I would also love for Charlie to like make like, I don't know, like I thought about having him like make me like matcha bowls and like make just make me different things for us to use in our kitchen and then potentially like sell that and turn that into a storefront. I don't know. Uh, so a storefront is also something that I've been thinking about, like an actual in-person thing. Um, but just to be completely honest with you guys, that's something that really scares me because of how I've seen businesses do that. And I've seen so many businesses go under and fail because of that. Um, and I just like, I don't know, money wise, it's just so scary. Like I'm 25, like I have like a good amount saved and I'm nervous that like, I don't want to lose everything I've saved up um, in order to start a business. But I guess like literally that's what happens. Like people put everything they have into businesses. Ugh, yeah. So that's something I've been thinking about. If you can't tell, I'm really torn between the idea. Um, so we'll see. We'll see you guys. Um, so sit down, write your goals for 2024, dream big. Um, and the next thing I want to say about this whole goal setting thing is now that I have my list of my 2024 goals, I'm going in every single day or I guess every single week, I'm writing out my schedule and within my schedule, I'm doing things that are helping me achieve these goals, especially it's January. I feel like people don't have a ton to shoot in January. So let's start working on some of these things that are on our list. Um, for me, I'm definitely going to work on my podcast event. 100% going to start working on um, my course and that product that's going to be for non-photographers. These are all things I'm going to start working on in the next like week or two because we can't achieve our goals if we don't start working towards them. And if you have some goals that are so big that you might not get to them this year, maybe you start working on them, but they just don't happen. It can roll over. Okay. Goals. We have rollover goals and that's okay. Okay. So dream big guys. And next week we're going to be talking about some of the things that you can do in 2024 to go full time, to help you go full time. Um, some of the things that, you know, are going to help you get kickstarted for the year in your business. So I'm super excited about that. All right, guys, that's all I have for today's podcast episode. Thank you so much for listening. And I did mention my Oshu Instagram. I actually think this episode is probably going to be the first episode that I'm going to like post about on there. If you want like podcast updates, that's where I'm probably going to post like submissions for the podcast and stuff. Go there, go give it a follow. I'll obviously shout it out on my like Cassidy Lynn Instagram too. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. Happy 2024. Happy new year. And I will see you next week for another episode.